What's happening Hardscapers? Today we're going to be measuring elevation to install some steps going up the side of this house. Let's get into this. So in order to do this, we're going to be using what's called a high precision altimeter. And essentially what this is, is a water level with a digital readout. It allows us to set a zero point or a benchmark somewhere and then measure the elevation up or down from that specific point. This is an excellent tool for estimating and quoting projects because it's nice and easy to set up. Just simply uncoil the hose turn it on, set a zero point, and then move around and allow it to load a digital readout from that point, whether up or down from that specific zero point. It's much easier than setting up a laser and measuring from that for an estimate or a quote, and it doesn't require much training to be able to understand how to specifically use one of these. Now this one that you see here is the U-Level. It's essentially the Unilock branded Smart Level. There's also the Zip Level. Those are the two on on the market that are available. I'll have links in the description if you're interested and going through those links helps to also support the channel if you do end up going with one of those. But they both work in the exact same way but there are pros and cons to each of those. Mine has been pretty fine. I have had an issue with the hose when I first purchased it. That was replaced for me. The zip level does have to go get calibrated every few years so you would have to pay to have that done. And one benefit of the U level or the smart level is that you can actually fix it on site whereas the zip level would have to be shipped back to the manufacturer to be fixed. Those are the main pros and cons of each of these but maybe I'll do a video in the future weighing the pros and cons of both the zip level and the smart level. Now a very rudimentary way of going about measuring the elevation for these specific steps would be looking at the bricks on the house and measuring up those from a zero point. This is assuming that the house was built level, the bricks were laid level so that you can measure up and use those as a guide to guide your measurements. Now that's not specifically accurate so what we will be using is this high precision altimeter and what we're going to start with is set a zero point at the base of these steps where that final step will step down to our initial step and that will be ground level that will be our zero point and then we're going to take our high precision altimeter and measure all the way up to the top where the final step tread will land. In this case, we have a measurement of 87.75 or 87 and three quarters of an inch. Now with this, we're going to divide by the number of steps to get a decent step height for each of our steps. I like to be in and around that seven inch range, but local codes and guidelines may dictate what you should be at for your step heights. I like to be at seven inches because it is not too high and not too low. It's a good amount, for, especially for the clientele that we typically service. And especially since these step treads are going to be at least 16 inches and maybe even more in some cases, but we'll get to that soon. So I know dividing 87.75 by 10 is just too high in that high eight inch range. So I'm gonna add a couple of steps to that and divide by 12. And that gets us 7.3 inches per step. And I'm gonna see what adding another step would do to that and that gets us down to six and three quarters of an inch per step. And I like that over having a 7.3 inch step, especially for this client. So we're gonna go with 13 steps at six and three quarters of an inch each. Now 13 steps at 16 inch treads gives us a total length of 208 inches. But for this project, from the initial step to the very end of the steps, we have a length of 250 inches. That means that we're gonna to need to build some landings using pavers that we're gonna also be matching with the walkway that we'll eventually be building, as well as the patio, to build some landings to be able to extend these steps. And in this case, we need to mark where each of our steps are going to be. We're gonna be using the high precision altimeter to do that again. So what we're gonna do here is go back to our zero point, our end final step, the ground level stepping down from that step and we're going to measure up six and three quarters of an inch and essentially the slope is going to dictate where each of our step ups are going to be because in this case we're not changing the grade for this project we're just installing some steps up the side of this house so i start at my zero point i go up six and three quarters of an inch and i know that that is the bottom of the second step that's where that landing is going to end for this initial step i can mark that with my spray paint and work my way up each 
of these step ups to be able to understand where my step tread of 16 inches for our caps are going to work nicely and where I'm going to need to build some landings to be able to extend that area. As we work our way up, the 16 inch step treads work much better because the slope gets much steeper but closer to the bottom of this project you can see that we have many more landings because the slope starts to get less and less steep with each of our steps marked out and knowing how many steps that we can have here we are going to order our product excavate the area prep our base install our steps See that we've installed some hardscape lighting underneath each of the caps here to be able to provide some safety as well as aesthetic appeal at nighttime for our clients to be able to enjoy these steps. If you want to learn more about hardscaping and how to build interlocking concrete pavement, retaining walls, and steps like these, you can check out our Hardscape membership platform, the How to Hardscape members only. That's at members.howtohardscape.com or check the link in the description below. We have courses on installing interlocking concrete pavement, installing segmental retaining walls, building gas fire features, and installing outdoor lighting. And we have many more courses on knowing your numbers if you're looking to start a hardscaping business. And if you have any questions about building your own steps, leave them in the comment section below. I respond to anybody and everybody that leaves a comment. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.